In this video, we'll talk about shrinkage or regularization techniques for building models. Previously, we've looked at an overview of different areas of methods used to build models, and we talked about methods that select a subset of variables, so-called subset selection procedures. In this video, we'll focus on shrinkage or regularization methods. Generally, these methods penalize the inclusion of predictors that are only slightly informative of the response. The lasso and ridge regression methods are the most commonly used shrinkage methods. We'll focus on the lasso method because the two are similar, but lasso has the additional benefit of performing variable selection, whereas ridge regression does not. To motivate what is being done in the lasso method, recall that the computational method used to find the beta coefficients in linear regression was called least squares. In least squares, we find the values of coefficients that minimize a quantity called the sum of squared residuals, or RSS. We denote these coefficients beta hat, where the hat is traditional notation in statistics used to indicate that something is an estimate. The fitted or predicted value is denoted yi hat. The residual is the observed response minus the predicted value, and the sum of squared residuals quantity that we aim to minimize is the sum shown here. We take each residual, square it, and add up all of these squared residuals. The goal is to find coefficients that make our predictions as close as possible to the observed responses. In other words, to make the residuals as low as possible. A problem that can arise with the least squares approach is the potential for overfitting when the number of predictors increases. In the plot here, we had a data set with 20 observations where all the predictors were simulated to be just random numbers. We increase the number of predictors included in the model one by one, and we see that as the number of predictors increase going along the x-axis, the sum of squared residuals on the y-axis is always decreasing. In particular, when the number of coefficients is equal to the number of cases, we achieve the perfect RSS of zero. In general, this is a problem for the least squares approach. Including more predictors automatically improves the sum of squared residuals metric. In this example, the predictors were random noise, and the fact that adding random noise predictors gives such clear improvements in RSS suggests that the least squares criterion is not ideal when there are lots of predictors being considered. It turns out that the lasso method uses a modified criterion that helps in cases when there are lots of predictors. LASSO stands for Least Absolute Shrinkage and Selection Operator, and the criterion that it uses to find good beta coefficients is to minimize a penalized version of the sum of squared residuals. The first part of this quantity is the familiar RSS, and the second term is an added penalty term. What exactly is being penalized, though? If we look more closely at the penalty term, we see that it involves the sum of the absolute values of the estimated coefficients. In the lasso method, we want to minimize this entire quantity, but this penalty term can only be positive. So its presence is hurting us in some sense. But we'll also see that this penalty term will help us in a substantial way. We want this penalty term to be small, so that this entire penalized sum of squared residuals quantity is minimized. So when is this penalty term large? For one, when a predictor has a large effect on the response that is, when a coefficient is large in magnitude. The penalty term is also increased if we have a lot of predictors with very tiny effects. It turns out that the lasso method shines for this second reason. Let's dig a little deeper as to why. When lots of predictors have very tiny effects, we should be worried that overfitting is happening. Why? Because our model is likely picking up on noise. Lots of small effects amounts to saying, we can decrease the sum of squared residuals just a bit more if we take a little of that predictor, a little of that one, and just a little of that one. This sounds a lot like overly reading into specific features of a single cat image when determining general characteristics of cat pictures. The plug in the right ear, the orange tint on the nose, the discoloration of the fourth stripe all help me explain just a few more pixels of this cat picture. The penalty term gives us a penalty for having many predictors with tiny effects. The severity of this penalty is determined by the lambda parameter. The higher lambda is, the more severe the penalty, and severe penalties incentivize coefficients for those weak predictors to be zero. 
Why? If those coefficients are zero, the sum of their absolute values is zero, and mathematically, no penalty is incurred. Another way to describe what the penalty term is doing is that it shrinks coefficients towards zero, so that less of a penalty is incurred. This is why lasso is called a shrinkage method. A synonym for this in statistics and machine learning is regularization. So the lasso method is a shrinkage method in that it incentivizes the coefficients to be closer to zero. Also, because of the particular form of the penalty term being a sum of absolute values, lasso is able to exactly set some coefficients to zero. This is a form of built-in variable selection. The variables that were selected to be in the model are the ones that did not have their coefficients set to zero during the fitting process. Let's take a closer look at the tuning parameter lambda. We've said that the severity of the penalty is determined by lambda. We can think of lambda as a fee to be paid for including a variable in the model. We only pay if a variable is included because lambda is multiplied by the estimated coefficient. If that coefficient is zero, the variable is not included and we don't pay the lambda fee. Let's think about the most extreme values for lambda to get a better sense of how this penalty tuning parameter works. If we set lambda to zero, we're saying that we'll impose no fee for having variables in the model. Any variables can be included without penalty. In this case, lasso ends up being the same as ordinary least squares because the penalty term goes away. On the other hand, if lambda is infinite, then we pay an infinite fee each time a variable is included in the model. To minimize the penalized sum of squared residuals then, we'd have to not include any variables in the model because even including just one would incur an infinite penalty. This is shrinkage to the extreme because all coefficient estimates would be shrunken to zero. What we want is a lambda that's in between some intermediate fee that discourages us from adding a very weak predictor, one with a small coefficient magnitude, but a fee that also does not incur too much penalty for our strong predictors. Remember that because of that sum in the penalty term, all predictors get penalized. We want to choose lambda carefully so that the best model is chosen. Let's look at an example from the ISLR book on a lasso model for predicting an individual's credit card balance. The response variable is credit card balance, and the data set contains several predictors, including income, credit limit, credit rating, whether the individual is a student, and some other variables. The plot here shows how the estimated coefficients on the y-axis change as the penalty lambda on the x-axis changes. As the penalty severity increases, the estimated coefficients move more and more towards zero. This is shrinkage in action. Eventually, most of the coefficients are set to zero with a severe enough lambda penalty. A vertical slice of this plot corresponds to one particular model. In the slice highlighted here, all coefficients are zero except the one for the credit rating variable. This indicates that the model chosen for this value of lambda has only rating as a predictor. How do we know which slice to choose, that is, which lambda to pick? For each lambda we try, we should estimate the true error rate on new data using cross-validation, and we'll pick the lambda that gives us the lowest estimated true error rate on new data. As a reminder, setting coefficients to zero amounts to selecting a subset of variables to include, which is a way to combat overfitting. We fight overfitting by not letting ourselves use weak predictors. Let's talk about a practical issue regarding scaling that arises due to the penalty term. Given that the lambda tuning parameter penalizes variables based on the magnitude of their coefficients, it's important that all predictors be on the same scale. Otherwise, some variables will be unfairly penalized more than others. For example, let's say that the price of some fabric is well captured by the model $4 plus $1 per centimeter. If we convert centimeters to meters, we have exactly the same information, but the coefficient for the length variable is multiplied by 100. In lasso, the length variable would be penalized 100 times more in units of meters than for centimeters. 
This isn't fair to the length variable. So in practice, we standardize the predictors so that they all have mean zero and standard deviation one. This ensures that all variables are on the same scale and are penalized equally. So we'll pause our discussion of lasso there, but just a quick note on ridge regression, which we mentioned earlier was another shrinkage method. With lasso, we modify the least squares criterion from linear regression by adding a penalty term that contained absolute values of the estimated coefficients. With ridge regression, we also use a penalized version of the sum of squared residuals, but this time we use the squared values of the coefficients in the penalty term rather than absolute values. With ridge regression, the concepts are the same as with lasso. Ridge regression shrinks coefficient estimates towards zero because of this penalty term, but it does not automatically perform variable selection because coefficients are never set exactly to zero. We won't get into why this is the case here, but there is a nice graphical explanation in the ISLR book. So in summary, shrinkage methods try to select models in a very different way than subset selection methods like best subset and stepwise methods. Shrinkage methods use a penalized version of the least squares criterion that mathematically encourages weak predictors to be left out of the model. The lambda tuning parameter that is part of the penalty term can be thought of as a fee incurred for variable inclusion. Choosing it well, usually via cross-validation, allows us to pick parsimonious models, that is models that only include the most relevant predictors. Parsimonious models are also called sparse models. We want sparse models because they are less prone to overfitting.